Hi everyone, I'm Rosie and welcome to Vox Yoga. So I'm sure we've all suffered from morning voice at some point in our lives. So I just wanted to do a short video about the relationship between sleep and the voice. So we know that our body needs a good amount of sleep and a good quality of sleep in order for our body to stay healthy. But what effect does this actually have on our voice? I feel like I'm quite an expert in this field as I have had insomnia for about 15 years now and I've had it during times where I've been training in rehearsals for shows, performing and then also long days of teaching as well. So I've done lots of reading and research into what's actually happening but also I think I've got a lot I can share about how to manage it if you do have a long vocal load and you are tired. Of course, the best thing you can do is rest, but that's not always possible. So yeah, this is just a short video about physically why our voice might need sleep, what we can do if we've got morning voice, and then also just some other factors to consider about your sleep setup. So sleep is one of the best things to ensure we keep a healthy immune system. Overnight, when we are sleeping, our cells are regenerating, so we can hopefully wake up and feel refreshed. So maybe if you've had a vocally tiring day the day before, or maybe your vocal folds are a little bit swollen, often just having that night of sleep will help to refresh, regenerate, and they'll be feeling much better in the morning. There are a few other things which we don't automatically think of with sleep that are going to affect our singing and our performing as well. For example, when we are learning new things, having good amount of sleep the night before and the night after this learning actually helps us to retain our memories. So if we're learning new material, sleep is going to help us to retain that material. So also when we're tired physically and mentally, multitasking is a lot harder for us. So we might be trying to remember the actual material of the song, but then our technique, when to breathe, how to breathe, um, thinking about our alignment, our dynamics, having control, just all of that's gonna be much harder. Maybe if we're then remembering staging in a performance, teaching what our students have been working on, in general, it's just gonna be much more tiring <laughs> and difficult for us to remember that if we haven't had that much sleep the night before. One big thing to remember is that singing is a very physical activity. And if we're physically tired, we're often not gonna have the energy that we need to breathe, the energy that we need to produce those maybe bigger notes, those higher notes, longer phrases. Um, of course, when we're tired as well, we tend to feel a lot more emotional. When we feel emotional, we often feel stressed a lot more easily. If we're not in control of our emotions and our stress, then often this is going to translate into tension in the body and we're just not going to be able to use our voice as efficiently as we could. So often when we wake up in the mornings and we have that feel of morning voice, a bit of croakiness, a bit of gravel, it tends to be because the vocal folds aren't touching together or maybe there's a bit of mucus in the way in the morning. Um, I know that I tend to uh, fall into fry a little bit when I'm tired. So there are a lot of things that you can do to make this easier, get those vocal folds touching, get good contact um, and also a bit more quickly as well. However, if you are tired physically, emotionally, everything, um, the longer warm up you can do, the better. And actually starting more gradual um, will be the best thing you can do as well. Saying that, the best, best thing you can do is hydrate. Hydration is key. I know that when I have nights when I'm awake a lot, I get much more of a dry mouth. Often, you know, there are other things that can affect um, our voice overnight, making us feel a bit croaky as well, which are things like if we do sleep with an open mouth, all this air drying out our mouth and our throat. So hydration's really gonna help that. So water, as soon as you wake up, um, get it into the system, but then steam as well, that will get to the vocal folds as quickly as possible. So steaming, using a nebulizer, just to get as much moisture 
into um, the voice, into that area, those areas as possible. I'd really recommend a bit of a physical wake up as well. Um, physical wake up, I was gonna say physical warm up. I suppose it is a physical wake up. <laughs> Whether that is some yoga, just some stretching, going for a run, just to kind of get the body feeling a bit more energized. In terms of your vocal warm up, SOVT is gonna be the best thing to do to get those chords um, coming together, get the adduction. So mm, sirens are gonna be great. I love zzz and vv if I'm feeling a little bit like I'm not having the best contact. Zzz, 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 ah, is gonna help. Um, but just easing into your vocal warm up a little bit slower than you normally would. Lots of slides are really great as well. There are also some other factors to consider with our sleep as well. One of them, I'm sure if you're a singer, you've heard <laughs> spoken about many times is acid reflux. Again, this often tends to um, get worse overnight because we're lying down and then the acid can um, come up up the esophagus and then um, over and can kind of get in the way of the vocal folds, which isn't very nice and I suffer from it myself. Um, there are a few things you can do to um, try and alleviate symptoms if that is what's causing your morning voice, your croakiness in the morning. Tilt the bed is one great thing and then just trying to, I say this, it's very hard for singers, not eat too late in the evening. That will also hopefully um, help your sleep get better as well if you don't eat too late. But when we are gigging and performing, that's just not possible, is it? Um, but if you do suffer from reflux, trying to find some things that will help you because that often has an effect on our voice in the morning as well. Some other things to think about are your physical sleeping position. Again, something I've suffered from, I'm not a good sleeper, um, is I used to, I, I would sleep like this. The only way I could get to sleep was literally with my, my shoulder up like this. And then in the morning, oh, I would have such, you know, tense shoulders and neck, which is so close to your larynx. So of course, if your shoulders, your neck are tense, your larynx and your jaw are probably likely to feel a bit of that as well, which will then have effect on your voice. So starting to think about your pillows, your bed is really useful. Um, this isn't an advert, but I've just got a very good pillow, um, which is made for the way you sleep, either on your back or your side, and it gets your neck in line with your spine. And I actually have found it's made quite a difference. Stretching in the morning, of course, thinking if you've got a bit of shoulder tension, doing um, stretches, directly for that is gonna to help to free up the voice and release some of that tension. Also one of the main things, which again, I suffer from, is uh, clenching your teeth in your sleep as well. So again, that's something that is gonna have quite an effect on your voice as well. Um, so it's knowing those triggers, knowing that you might um, grind your teeth, you might have reflux, you might be sleeping in a weird position and just thinking, how can I change those to help my vocal production feel easier. So I hope this video has just given you some small things to think about. I know a lot of them are easier said than done. Um, you know, a lot of the time adrenaline will just get us through if we've had a bad night's sleep. Um, but to be honest, if you just sing through when you're tired without taking those extra steps to maybe, you know, steam, do a longer warm up, do a physical warm up, then you might end up getting vocal problems. There's only so far adrenaline can get us through when we're um, performing or, you know, going through our daily routine if we do have a high vocal load. Everyone is different when it comes to this. Some people can do totally fine on four hours sleep a night and others will struggle if they only get seven hours. Um, you know, if it is, if it does get really bad, go to your doctor. You know, there's loads of things out there on the internet saying you must, you know, have lavender on your pillow, read before you go to bed. I've tried them all and sometimes I will still have a terrible night's sleep. So it is finding the things that work best for you. However, if you are someone that has struggled with sleep and finds it affects your voice, do get in touch because I do feel like I can, I can advise quite well on this topic. Um, but really, listen to your body. I know that the best thing that people are going to say is 
rest, rest your voice, but it's not, it's not always possible if we need to earn a living or if we have these work commitments, but you do need to put your vocal health first. So if you found this useful, hit like, hit subscribe. I release weekly videos, yoga, singing, yoga and singing. Have a great day and I hope you get a good night's sleep tonight.